Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guest, Joseph Rosendo. And he's here to share with us his new book, Musings, The Short Happy Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys. So are you looking for the next great adventure? Many of you know our special guest. He's a travel connoisseur, motivational speaker, and four-time Emmy Award-winning director and host of Joe Rosendo's Travel Scope, which is the award-winning PBS travel television series. Joseph has been published worldwide and is a consulting editor for DK Eyewitness Travel Guide's Where to Go When and Where to Go When the Americas, as well as the author of The Insider's Guide to Los Angeles. So let's welcome to the show, Joseph Rosendo. Marianne, thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate the kinds of things that you do with your show and the kinds of people that you have on your show. It's really something that's that's needed really now, right now. Well, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about your new book. I mean, I was so excited when I saw it. I couldn't wait to talk to you. And I have to ask you, like, what inspired you to write your book? Well, you know, it's it's a collection. It, well, it's actually three books in one. It's a collection of uh, stories that I uh, I put together for uh, my travel magazine, uh, uh, Travel Scope, um, which was in print for many years and then is now on the um, the internet on our website. You, people can get it at our website, travelscope.net. And um, so it's a collection from a column I called Musings. And um, the book is Musings, the Short Happy Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys, and that's kind of what it is. And it's uh, a collection of, uh, there There are some how-to and tips, travel tips for people. There are travel destinations that I cover. And then it's a memoir as well. It kind of follows my journey. Uh, when I started writing and, and collecting the stories, and I started writing the column Musings so many years ago, I realized that my journey as a travel writer and as a traveler was uh, very close to a travel uh, story because it had a beginning, a middle, there would be an end, uh, and but the most important part of the trip would be the journey. And so what inspired me to collect it uh, first of all, during the pandemic over the course of the last year, uh, I had the time. I was doing our PBS travel show, Travel Scope, Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope. And so we were on hold for that. Uh, everything else was locked down. And uh, the desire that I had had or the, the dream that I had had of putting these stories together because I felt they had a, uh, something to say, that uh, this gave me the opportunity to do that. So the, the pandemic time this last year... I was able to spend the time, and, and, it, and it basically, like every good thing, it, it evolved. It started off to be a collection of just the stories that I had written, and then I started writing new stories, and I wrote introductions to the stories that I had written, and then I started bringing in uh, photography and uh, images, uh, illustrations. I pulled uh, the illustrations I had used in the original um, printed version of the magazine. So to made that tie-in from uh, the, the years, uh, the beginning of the, the Travel Scope experience and uh, where, we, where I was now. So it was really a, a wonderful opportunity. And, and, I, and, and I think the, the, just, the gist of the, the book, the, the idea of uh, you know, carpe diem, seizing the day like you do on your show, Making the most of the moment uh, is is the message of of the book throughout, and I use different illustrations of that message by my travel experiences, and of course by my own personal experience. I incorporate uh, events through my life with my family, and and uh, and different things that happen throughout throughout my life. Some of them travel travel based, and others really not. Just part of our a human journey. And and I, I think that 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 was something that was nece- it's something necessary now. And I think this this pandemic time, or the, you know, has as, with all the tragedy that's connected to it, has 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 some positive aspects to it as for individuals. And it's that we get to 
really appreciate and the what we have and the relationships we had. And we've learned in a new way how important those moments that you are talking about and we all are talking about are and how 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 transitory they are, how quickly they leave us, and how we have to uh, take take the moments and and make the most of it. You know, I've, I've traveled in many many countries, and I celebrate everybody's holiday. I celebrate all their festivals. I I like to say I'll eat anything, I'll drink anything, and I'll do pretty much anything uh, to have the experience. And and I've I've learned that over the you know over over this period of time that. That those those moments that are presented to you are fleeting, and we need to make the most of them. We need to uh, to 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 just seize the day and and appreciate what we have and make the most of it. And that's basically the the, the story of the book. Well, I love how you bring that all together because it's really about what's important and what matters. How did your upbringing, you know, because I know you're Cuban American, how did that influence any part of your journey, you know, becoming a travel writer? Well, um, you know, I think um, it, it, it put me in a, in a situation when I was ra- being raised in Miami. Uh, and I'm from Miami, Florida. Uh, Cuban, the Cuban American population was not do- as dominant as it is now in the area, and so we were uh, on the edges of society somewhat. And uh, I learned uh, I learned about how important culture was because uh, there was my parents were first generation Americans and and they were very uh a very uh excited or enthusiastic about having us uh, assimilate into a, a general American culture. Uh, that was fine, but but we were kind of leaving our own culture behind along the way. So I, I, I learned uh, by being in that position that that how important culture is. Unfortunately, my, my grandparents and my my aunts, uh, they they were still very much connected to their culture. So I was able to experience it and keep it alive through them I, but then i had to regain it and i had to recapture that that sense of culture so that that gave me um a sense of difference and how the value of different ways and different perspectives of looking at things and you know like a, my quote that i use in every show every travel scope pbs show and and i use it in the book i highlight where uh, mark twain's quote travel is fatal to prejudice bigotry and narrow mindedness is something i think it's a it's an axiom that travelers should carry with them uh that 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 i learned that through my family and of course you know i also had uh travel was an escape for us we we the family was, uh, you know, on the lower on the lower economic scale. We were poorer, and uh, so every experience was we had, we made experiences that were inexpensive. The, the beach experiences, for instance, in the Miami area, and the one day a year that we would go on a trip, which was to my father's hometown of or birthplace. Earth town of Key West, Florida. It was only several hours away, but it was like the highlight of my life, and it was an, uh, an escape. And I describe it in the book and in, in, in several stories. Uh, escape from um, uh, the pressures of our economic situation, our financial situation, economic situation in Miami, and and there was a sense of adventure to it, and that that just caught me up and. And it was it was a good time for the family. Everybody was at, at the peak of of enjoyment, and and that that taught me that that gave me the interest in traveling. And then in 1969, when I traveled abroad for the first time as a member of a, a USO show that was put together by UCLA, where I had come to California to receive to work on my masters and to pursue an acting career. Uh, so I was cast in a, a show to entertain the troops in Germany. And um, the first night that we were there as honorary lieutenants, as members of the USO, and we were at dinner and, and a waiter came up and asked us if we would like a, a wine. And um, my my fellows 
put me in charge of tasting it. I was not very experienced, but I gave it a try. I'd seen movies. I knew what you did. And so I was, you know, swirled the glass and put my nose in the glass to smell the wine. And then I sipped it, and I remember just turning the glass up and gulping it down, and my, my friend saying, jo- Joseph, you're not supposed to gulp it. You're supposed to taste it. And I turned to the waiter, and I said, whatever this is, I want more. And that really <laughs> was what that, 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 was what, that was what that experience was all about. Because then I, I've got to see Europe and the, the history of Europe and the, the and, and you know the, all all that's happened there, all the good things and all the horrible things that have happened there, and I, and and the different perspective that people had on life, and it was a, a complete eye-opening experience to me, and I just caught, caught the fleet fever of wanting more. It was the same thing. Whatever this is, I want more, and so. Because of my sensitivity towards the importance of culture and then the new cultures that I was experiencing, because we were in Germany entertaining the troops and we really got to know Germany for two months. But at the end of the trip, we got to do a whirlwind tour of the rest of Europe on our own. I I really started to, to have a sense of this is what I want. I want this expanded view of life by incorporating all the things that these people have to share, all these different people in the world, all the, the things you learn. I'd like to say that when I go on a trip, I like to come back augmented. And I'm not talking about the 10 pounds extra from eating French pastries, although that happens too. I'm, I'm talking about augmented spiritually and, and intellectually and and. and to be bigger than I am, better than I am, hopefully, from what I've learned from my travels. And that, that is the wonder of travel, is that it, so much that you can learn. It offers you so much. If you, op- if you have eyes to see and, hears, and ears to hear, and uh, the book is my guidebook, basically, for people to how to develop that kind of sensibility so that when they travel, they, they, they come back augmented from their experiences and they gain more from those moments that they uh, see. And, you know, and it's very interesting that your, your show is, is about making the most of the moments and talking about the moments. Because, uh, you know, Pico I, a very wonderful uh, tra- uh, travel writer, talks about the significant moment, going on a trip and seeking the significant moment and with antenna out, looking for that significant moment that really basically uh, encapsulizes what that experience that you're having, that trip is about and what you're going to bring bringing back with you much better than souvenirs and trinkets that you're going to bring back with you that's going to stay with you forever. Because these moments may be fleeting, but when you incorporate them into your life, they become never-ending and evergreen. So these are moments that don't you, your memories and your experiences when you're traveling, that, you, that are learning experience and inspirational experience, you never lose those. So there is a way to kind of capture those moments and keep them by, by what, the, what you have when you travel. So that, that, I think that's how my, my family background, and that's why the book is, you know, is part travel tips, travel destinations, and also a memoir, because it, without that but the back without you knowing my history and who who I am it, it's difficult to understand my take on on my even the tips I give and certainly my take on the destinations I travel to and are incorporated in the book so so I think that that's what my family gave me they gave me a sensitivity to the importance of culture and to what you what is available for us to learn from different cultures. Oh my goodness. How important is that? And that trip, that first trip you took just, you know, it it sounds like it just was a pivotal point. It changed everything. Is that when, is that when you decided, okay, no more acting for me. I'm a travel writer. This is it. Well, actually I, I, I did come back from that trip and I said, you know, whatever this is, I want more. And, uh, and I pursued, and then uh, then the other good thing to happen. I have so I had my dream, and I, I didn't have 
any idea how to go about manifesting it. And that fortunately also at that time of my life, that um, another, uh, I, I ran across a, a quote from Henry David Thoreau. And the quote is, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dream and endeavors to live the life they have imagined, they will have a success undreamt of in common hours. And that said, okay, because the idea behind that is if you do that, then the universe moves to around your desire and your efforts to make them happen. Things that you never thought would take place, meetings that you never thought would take place, begin to happen to you and allow you to have the dream you have imagined. And so I did that. I, I took that to heart and said, okay, so my job is to endeavor on a daily basis to have this dream. And that was the beginning of the journey to towards being a travel writer. Now, it took me 10 years from when I started. I went back to Europe several times to re, to re-educate uh, myself about what that experience was. And then um, it took me 10 years to actually write my first story, which I did uh, a nuts and bolts story on leasing a car in Europe for the Los Angeles Times. I think I made $50. But I was on on that road. And I went to a seminar where I, where I was taught from by other travel writers of what, what was involved with this. I read books. But the idea was to endeavor to live the life I had imagined. So that was the goal. And every day, I did something to it, to, to p- pursue that. And uh, it took a while. But then, of course, I've, but then since 1980, I've been a travel writer, and I had a travel radio show, and, and now the television show. And we have, uh, you know, I write blogs and podcasts, we produce podcasts, and uh, and uh, in the book, the book is kind of the book is the, the latest manifestation of endeavoring to live the life I have imagined. So that's 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 kind of how it all came into in, in, together. Well, and I love how in your book you talk about packing. Because I think a lot yeah. of people, <laughs> they look at that and they're like, oh my gosh, am I overpacking? You know, packing, it, it just seems like that packing can be a real tough thing. And I have some friends that are great at it and some that, you know, will bring five suitcases no matter if they're gone for a week. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it, you know, my wife. I've been like I've been doing this since uh, you know for a long time, and uh, I still sit there and look at the clothes and say, well, gee, should I take this shirt or that shirt or this? Fortunately, you know, my wife Julie, who is a producer of the Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope, the PBS show, and uh, we've been we've been together for you know 15 years, and she uh, becomes my helpmate really in those and makes the decisions a lot of times for me. But in the early days. What I ended up doing, and I, I write about it in the book, it, to face this dilemma, is I ended up with creating a so-called travel uniform. You know, I had my coat that I take on the trips, uh, and had to have pockets and everything so I could put my tape recorders and my batteries. And I was also shooting pictures and writing at the time, so you know, I, I needed a big backpack so I could carry all my, uh, you know, my recording equipment and my cameras. And uh, you know, but but I basically. Developed Developed a pack, uh, travel writer's uniform, so it would be very easy. Take this coat, that shirt, those pants, those shoes, and you're ready to go. And I was able to hone it down. But yeah, you know, you know, there's and there's so many wonderful tips on packing. You know, some people say put everything you want to take out on the uh, take on the trip on the bed, and then put half of it back. But you know, my problem is I can't ever decide which half. I should put back. So, yeah. So it's been a, it's, you know, it's been a trial, but uh, the travel writing uniform uh, helped me early on. And then thank God for my wife who continues to help me. And uh, in those, and, you know, and, uh, and now we're, and now that we're shooting the, the you know, the PBS television show, uh, it, it becomes, you know, every, my clothes become costumes. So that that becomes a whole that that include that adds another element to the whole packing a dilemma. Well, thank goodness you have her to help you with that. You know, you've got to have a good partner yeah, in crime. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, do you know? I, and it's interesting because in your book you talk about like how there's just an art to travel, and it's interesting. I think a lot of times people don't really 
understand that. And I'd love for you to expound on that for our listeners. Yeah, they just think I'm going to just grab all my stuff and go. Yeah, no, there is an art to it. And there is, uh, I do a presentations at New York Times Travel Show in different places around the, the country. Uh, I speak at travel shows. I, you know, I speak to groups, uh, motiv- as in a kind of motivational, uh, wellness, uh, expos and things like that. And, um, and talk, and talk about the experience of traveling and, of course, highlight destinations, which is what people like to see too. And, and yeah, the, 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 you know, the basic, the art of traveling is got a lot to do with where you put your intention and what you're traveling for. Now, people travel for many reasons and people travel for many reasons at different times in their life and different times in the year. So, but, but it's, there is, there's an underlying art to traveling because you have to, you need i feel you need to put yourself in a certain kind of uh frame of mind and have a certain perspective on the experience that will allow things to happen to you have good things happen to you i'm talking about and um you do that by opening up your heart opening up your mind uh being available for the experience making an effort reaching that's why i always say you know when you travel and you you should if you travel to a foreign country learn a, a, a bit of the language enough of the language to put people at ease so that they'll open up to you you know part part of that was my method in order when i was doing the radio show and getting interviews and doing the travel sh- television show to have uh, interactions that i could capture on fi- on film or on video and um part of that was that my method for doing that but but it that's everybody I did that before when I was just traveling for my own pleasure, because that's if you put yourself in a situation, if you're mindful about the encounter and you open yourself up to the experience and you um, banish fear as much as you can, fear the unknown and you know real fear. People, people. One of the things that holds people back is traveling uh, afraid. Uh, and and you, I'm not saying that people should be foolish or reckless, but I, I do think that you need to realize that the world is actually a safer place than we all seem to think it is, or are or, or told it is, and um, and that you can open yourself up. You can make an effort. It's up to us to create the situation. Nobody's going to do your trip for me. That's one of the things I always disliked about the old, uh, if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium type of tours that people just went through ticking off landmarks. Oh, we see the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe. Oh, I was at the Coliseum. Okay, so you have your list of things that you've seen. Fine. It's checked off. That's all wonderful. But the experiences we remember are the times when we opened ourselves up and we had an encounter with someone, Uh, 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 you know, in a cafe or someone shared something with us. I have a million of those experiences and those experiences become life changing. They are, you know, during my talks at the travel shows and stuff, I I have one subject called, you know, travel is a life changing experience. And the life changing experiences are the experiences that reprioritize things for you. And they're all available in the world of travel when you're out there. There are wild experiences like, you know, jumping into the devil's pool in in Victoria Falls. That was quite uh, a wild experience. But what's really the experiences that really changed my life and the experiences that really changed people's lives are the experiences that make you look at life in a different way or give you a new perspective and add meaning to your life and allows you to change your priorities. And from that moment forward, you start being different in the world. And the wonder of travel and the wonder of this world that's out there that we're trying to all get back to and we're all going to be hungry for, I expect that travel is going to explode once we feel safe enough to go out there and meet people again. Uh, the wonder of all that is that that they, th- there's there's a myriad of opportunities for you to have those experiences that that 
from this point forward, things are different. And those are, and I've had, fortunately, a, num- a number of them. I mentioned one, my, tra- my the, the main one for me as a travel writer, going to Europe with the USO show. But there's been a lot of, of that, over the course of my life, there's been a, a number of those kinds of experiences connected to the travel experiences. But you have to, the art of traveling is traveling open-hearted, uh Lower the the fear quotient. Uh, listen, learn, or go prepared. You know, I always do research for my shows, of course, and for my writing. Uh, that part as a journalist, I had to research the destination. You want to know about the people you're going to be experiencing, and the places you're going to see, and the history behind it. I mean, it's overwhelming. So you need to do your work. You need there. There's an art to it. You need to prepare for a trip. It's not just a matter of buying that airplane ticket and hopping on the plane. You can do it that way, and you still will have wonderful experiences, but you can enrich your experience by preparing yourself like you would prepare yourself for anything important. This is a, travel is a big investment, and it's going to, you know, it's not, it's not cheap to go to Europe anymore or to go anywhere anymore. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's an investment in time, and it's an investment in effort, and it's an investment in your your uh your who you are you're investing in something look at it that way that you are putting out you need to invest in it in order to get a return it doesn't happen by just in, endeavor to live the life you will imagine and things will come to you but if you walk you know some people i'm afraid travel and they could go anywhere uh they could be in a hotel and that hotel could be anywhere uh, that's why I love to go to destinations that force you to be immersed in the destination and the people. That's why I love India as a destination, because you you can be in the finest hotel in the most uh, Western hotel in the world in any place in India. And you step outside the door and India grabs you by the throat and starts thrashing you around. And in three blocks, you'll have 30 things happen to you that have never happened to you before in your life. You'll smell, feel, hear, uh, uh, just have to be a completely eye-opening experience. And you, you, sometimes it's too much for people. That's India, like, is not a destination for everybody to travel to because it's such an overload of, of sense of, of experiences. But, uh, so you have to do what you can do. But, uh, but that's why I love that because when I'm there, there's no way I can miss the experience and the places that you can travel to that make it easy for you to have these life changing and um, experiences are are, are are where I recommend people go. And that's when I do my shows and I highlight destinations. Those are the kind of destinations I highlight. Well, it sounds so exciting when you do it that way because you really are immersing yourself in another culture and really getting the full experience as opposed to just being a visitor. Exactly. You never want to be, you know, you, you, you never want to sightsee. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, you don't want to isolate yourself from the experience and just observe or sightsee, if you will, as if it's over there. You want to in, in be in the moment. Uh, you want to um, relish the good and the bad and ugly of the experience. I mean, not all of it's pretty. Uh, uh, travel is uh, difficult uh, sometimes. I mean, there's arrangements. There's uh, the uh, insecurity of being in a new place. There's the language uh, uh, hurdle that's, that that to overcome. Uh, so it's work uh, in some regards, but it's so valuable work. It's such you know, it's such good work. Uh, uh, and it, you know what work it is, and, and your rewards are so many if you travel with the right uh, sensibility, the right spirit, and if you see it as as uh, art, uh, and and that you're creating. It's it's an art also because you're creating the moments, you're creating that experience. Can't sit back and wait and expect somebody to create it for you. 
that's like I was saying. That's why I hated the, if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium experience. where somebody led you around by the nose. You, nowadays, tour companies, thank God, are, have got the idea that, that people want experiences, authentic experiences with people. So they've given people time on the trips to go off on themselves. They've given them the information and say, okay, you got this afternoon off. And people who take advantage of that and just don't go back to the ship and have lunch there, but have lunch out and have an experience, those are the people that come back with the the, the more the best the, the most for their money. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't buy experiences like that. You know, it's so intense, and it has me thinking. I mean, my goodness, because I know Julie is so highly you know, gifted at the work that she does. You both are these great professionals. How is it for the both of you traveling? Because it must be a completely different experience when you've got like a crew in tow and everyone there and you're just working. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Traveling with the person you love has always been my, my dream because I knew that what would make an experience richer would be to share it with somebody who was like-minded. And so um, throughout my life, I, in, in different relationships, I kind of, that was kind of like, and I, I have a, one of the stories in the book is about that experience of traveling with, seeking the loved one, traveling with the prospective loved one, and what a test traveling can be. Some people will fail that test, but it's good to know now before you uh, start out on, on other experiences with them. So, so yes, so that was always my dream, and I'm fortunate to have had that experience, and I have that experience with my wife. Now, we also work together, which puts a whole new twist on the experience. And, uh, you know, we are both uh, strong, strong profession, uh, creative professionals. Uh, it took us a while to figure out um, what she should be in charge of on those trips and, who, who you know, handling the crew. And she's the producer and pr what producer things were, because I did a travel radio show for 23 years, uh, right up till when I met Julie. And so I was all of it. I was the producer, the writer, the director, the host, and everything. And, and on Travelscope, the PBS show, I'm the host and the writer and the director, but she's the producer. So what are those duties that belong to the producer? And what are those duties that belong to the director? And how do you respect each other as uh, differences and, and also lay off and don't step on people's toes and step on your loved one's toes is, is, is an art too. That's the art of traveling with your, with your wife and working together is, is definitely an art. And it's, 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 we've had some tough times because of how difficult that is sometimes, but it's also been, uh, rich. Uh, Julie and I have been married, uh, uh, let's see. I guess see if I get this right. We got married in 2007, so we've been married almost 14 years, and um, uh, it's like we've been married 28 years <laughs> because yeah. uh, we, we're we're together all the time, and uh, and we've gone through thick and thin. Uh, and there's nothing like being on produ in, in production. And we have a very small crew. There's just the, uh, the cameraman and, and, and the sound guy and, and Julie and I. And uh, so it's it's we don't have a lot of people to a lot of cats to uh, to um, to corral. But um, but we it still makes it difficult. But over the course of the time, it's um, it's it's been a, a, a learning experience for us. But it's a very very rich experience, and uh, that we've been that we've. We we have been able to create what we've created together, and uh, and also continues to stay married, which is a, a trick. <laughs> well, hey, I'm applauding you both all the way, and I'm in complete awe because to be able to do this and also work together, you know, is a, another component in it. And then plus travel, because you hear about couples they go on trips just travel, you know, not with the work component, and sometimes it can be super stressful. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. You know, you have different uh, interests, you have different uh, ways of being in the world, uh, you know, and, and, and travel is, a, is not absolutely smooth. It's a new experience. And every day you're having new encounters. And there's not something you're, if you're a kind of person who likes everything to be in order and comfortable and you don't like uh, the unexpected, then, uh, see, I like to say that people should travel 
expecting the unexpected, wanting the unexpected, waiting or leaving themselves open for unexpected things to happen. Some of the best parts of the, uh, the and I, I talk about this in the book, and some of the best parts of the, of, of the show, the travel show and, and my radio show, were those things I didn't expect to happen. Uh, I didn't, it, we were just there in the moment, the moment, to go back to your your show and your, and your uh, emphasis, the moment presented itself. And it was like God-given. I like to say that, you know, uh, you know, God is our, our gaffer because he, because these things would hop, would fall into place and you go, okay, this is what we're here for. When we go to markets, that's why I go to markets a lot. I love markets when I'm traveling for just Julie and I or when we're traveling to shoots. We always include a segment where we go into a marketplace because that's where the people are and that's where interactions are richest and they're happening, happening and there's people that know each other and there's strangers and there's tourists and everybody's in there. And uh, when we get ready to walk into a market to start to shoot, I just turn to the cameraman, the sound guy, and Julie, and I say, okay, here we go. Let's go get it. And we just walk in there, and we walk up with people, and everything's very spontaneous. It makes it very, very difficult to shoot and, and get complete stories. And, and But it's the richest parts of some of those shows are those experiences because we're just open to let them happen. That's got to be so amazing because you don't know what to expect. And that's where all the miracles happen. You know, that's where all the fun right. comes into play. Yeah. And I, my goodness, you have so much that's in your book because, you know, you, you, of course you have the memoir piece, but you have so much great information in your book. I was even surprised that you had the section that even talks about like when you go to the market, you know, if you really want right. something, how to go ahead and barter or haggle. Yes. Yes, yeah, and, and also the the you know the the philosophy of of bargaining. Yeah, uh, it's you know it, it's and so, you know it, once again you're trying to have a cultural experience. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you you know you why bargain for that? It's so cheap anyway. You are trying to have a uh, you're not trying to take advantage of anybody. Certainly you're not. Uh, but you know bargaining is an interesting cultural exchange. And some of the best experiences I've had, once again, is with vendors and bargaining with them. And I mean, really sweet uh, uh, and, and and funny experiences. And, you know, I've always tried to keep it. Everybody wins. That's the most important tip for bargaining is at the end, everybody has to feel like they won. And there are some good things to remember. And and in some places, I feel not bargaining, not Bargaining is part of acknowledging that this is a culture that, and this is a cultural uh, trait or a cultural attribute. Is that's how people deal? And you're trying to make. I always feel like when you're traveling, the goal is to be as much like the people that you're visiting as you can. And it's difficult to do. You're always going to be outside the the uh, the, in, the 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 norm there for the for the people. But bargaining is a doorway in because they want to deal with you. They want to talk to you. You you exchange humor. You exchange uh, different kinds of emotions. You you uh, you know and, and you find a common compromise. People find people. That's one way you compromise, and for people to come to an agreement as different cultures about anything is a gigantic confidence building plus, and it's an affirmation of who we are, are as human beings, and an affirmation of how similar we are. To find agreement on anything, and. Finding agreement on a price is a good place to start, and uh, and not you know walking in and just saying oh I've you know I'm just uh, I, I'm I'm from a rich country I can pay whatever I want you know so what does this what does this mean to me that you know it's better to walk in and have people respect you and your how much you value what they've done that you're willing to negotiate with them about that. I mean, you know, I always negotiate in a way so that it ends up that they make sure make sure that the vendor benefits, uh, and you know, and and don't ever leave people uh, go be so 
you know, hard nose that the people end up being angry with you. But, you know, but they people respect your participation in their life. And that's one way. Any, any way, any way to, to, to make a connection. And in a market where people are selling stuff and you're buying, that's one way to make a connection, I think. I, th- I think I give out some good tips, on, don't you? Oh, my goodness. Lots of good tips. Lots of good tips. Joseph, I mean, we could keep you here forever and talk about your new book. There's so much great information in your book. We're not even touching the tip of the iceberg on that. Where can our listeners connect with you and learn more about your work and be part of your community? Well, the easiest way to connect with uh, Travelscope and to follow our travels is to go to our website, Travelscope.net. Uh, that's the easiest place. There's uh, my blogs are there, my podcasts are there. Uh, they'll see uh, uh, promos of our different PBS television shows. The book is is front and center uh, in the in the on the homepage, and they can get the book by going to uh, Amazon and iBooks in digital forms and as a paperback uh, in um, in paperback in Amazon. And they can contact us directly through the website, and I'd be happy to – they can get the book through us directly. And in that case, I can also uh, sign the book for them as well. So the best thing to do is uh, Amazon iBooks for the, for the book directly or go to Travelscope.net. And Travelscope.net, they can sign up for uh, – subscribe to our n- online version of the newsletter that was the birthplace of, of many of these stories that are in the book. So they can also sign up and we'll keep them on our free. It's free. The newsletter is free. Uh, The online newsletter is free for any of our subscribers. So, yeah, Travelscope.net is the best place to go. Oh, gosh, so much great resources right there. Well, Joseph, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. I really appreciate your taking the time to speak with me and giving me the time to be able to share uh, the book and uh, the Travelscope experience with your with your listeners. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Well, thank you, Joseph. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Musings, The Short Happy Pursuit of Pleasure and Other Journeys. Musings available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And if you don't see it on the shelf, ask for them to order it. And of course, you can get that on Kindle. Again, if you'd like to connect with Joseph Rosendo, you can at Travelscope.net for more information. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.